Today we're going to take a look at Helicon Focus to focus stack your images instead of using Lightroom. So I've done several videos recently on focus stacking. One on how to manually focus stack regardless of camera type where you set your focus point something close to you in the foreground and then you begin to work it through the frame so that at the end after you use something like Photoshop to blend them all together you end up with an image that is sharp from front to back. I've also looked at how to use the Nikon Z series camera to help automate some of that with its focus shifting feature. Again, in both those videos though, I used Photoshop to blend those images together to get that one in focused image. So today we're gonna to take a look at something a little different, a program called Helicon Focus, which is a program dedicated to focus stacking. And there's a couple advantages to it, which we're gonna dive into and take a look at. So the program we're going to look at is Helicon Focus, which is dedicated to this blending of focus stacked images to get you that final image that's sharp from front to back. It's targeted towards landscape photographers and macro photographers where that depth of field, we really want to make sure we have images that are sharp from front to back. It's available for Windows machines and Macs, and we're going to take a look at a couple of the different versions it has, which ones we're using for this little trial today that I'm working through, and then we'll pull in some of my images from something I shot this past weekend. We're going to blend them together, take a look at some of the main highlights of the program, and then see what it does in the end and see if it looks like software that you should give a try. So some of the things that Helicon Focus brings to the table right off the bat is it can open raw images directly and you can just either drag your images into it or it actually can act as a plug-in into Lightroom where you can have your images in Lightroom and then sort of export them into Helicon Focus where you can then do this focus stacking and then bring them back into Lightroom as a DNG, which is sort of attractive and we'll dive into that in a little bit. The program is also optimized for performance, being able to take advantage of multiple cores, 64-bit, and from my experience, it is much faster at blending these images together than Photoshop, which can be handy if you're trying to focus stack a lot of images, whether that be multiple scenes that are focus stacked or even just a focus stack where you've got a large number of images in it. You know, a landscape photographer, we're probably in that four to six, four to 10 range, something in that range is the number of images, so not too bad. But if you're a macro photographer, you could start getting up in the 20, 30, you know, 40 images that you can blend together. So performance can be real important if you're trying to do this on more than one scene. So it brings some performance optimizations to the table and as well as a couple special tools that can just make life a little easier when you're trying to refine some of those focus points. So what we're going to do here first is look at the different versions that are available from Helicon's website. There are three versions uh, of the software and I'm going to tell you which one I'm using and we're going to look at the comparison chart real quick just to sort of go through it. So let's take a real quick look at the three different versions of Helicon Focus there are. There is a light version, a pro version, and a premium version. So let's take a real quick look. The light version here, as you can see, you know, it's 16 bit, it's unlimited stack length. So if you have a whole lot of images to blend together, you can handle it. It's got dust map support. So if you're trying to look for another way to handle dust spots in your on your center, it can work with that. Raw development, which I think is something that's uh, very important. It can actually open the raw files itself and work with the raw files directly. Smooth interaction with Lightroom, it can function as a plugin, so you can export from Lightroom into Helicon Focus to work with your files. Command line support, and multi-core processing that can be what helps make it work faster. And the advanced interpolators, so essentially the algorithms that make this thing work are in light. So really, light can do a lot of what you're going to want it to be able to do. As you can see from the list, there's a whole lot of other things that Pro comes with, which includes a Helicon remote desktop, which would be handy if you're a product photographer and trying to focus stack those shots in a studio environment. Not sure how helpful that is for a landscape photographer, but for studio work, it could be very helpful. Specialized retouching tools. These are really cool. We'll be taking a look at them in the demo. This is something that I think is a tipping point into the Pro package, in my opinion. OpenCL hardware acceleration, again, a little bit of performance boost, make things just a little faster. If you're doing this a lot, could be worth it. Batch mode, again, for landscape photographer, not sure it's going to be super helpful, but if you're doing product shots or anything like that, where you're having a lot more files and a lot more subjects and you want to just funnel through them really quickly, a batch mode could be certainly very useful for that. Raw in DNG out mode, this is another one of those features I think is, is a good one to have and what convinced me to go to the pro version. Essentially brings in your raw files and then you can save those to a DNG file, which means I can use them again right in Lightroom. Really cool, we'll talk more about that later. Depth map saving, 3D model generation, those are some of the things that come in the pro package. And in the premium package is everything the Light and the Pro has, except it also adds Helicon Remote for mobile. So it works on an Android, iOS device, anything like that. Again, not sure that's super helpful for a landscape photographer, especially if you've got a camera 
like you know something like the Nikon that can do a focus shift and do that automatic automated stacking for you in camera I sort of would use that so I'm, I don't see a huge reason to go to the premium package as a landscape photographer where I settled in at is the pro package namely for the specialized retouching tools which we'll take a look at and the raw to DNG those two things were what took me from going with the light version to the pro package so that's what we'll take a look at so let's dive into the software here. Um, first, to be upfront with it, this is software I actually purchased. I'm not sponsored. I'm not affiliated with Helicon software in any form, shape, or way. I've just been doing so many videos on focus stacking, and I'd heard about some additional programs to do your focus stacking in beyond Photoshop, often with favorable reviews being better than Photoshop. I wanted to take a look at one of them since I've been working with so much focus stacking in these videos just to see what it was about and see how it worked. So we're going to be using Helicon Focus Pro right here. I'm gonna go through with my workflow uh, how I would do this. And to do that, we're gonna start in Lightroom. And what I've got is I have my five images here. And this is at a waterfall I shot this past weekend. Um, it was my first time there. And as you can see, I've got some rocks right here up in front. It works through this crowded boulder field, back to the waterfalls, and then up to the trees up in the back. Now, unlike a lot of my videos where I've shot with a Nikon, you know, Z-series camera with a tremendous number of megapixel or something like that, these were shot on my travel camera. I shot them on a Panasonic GX85. That tends to be my travel setup. It's a 16 megapixel camera. And on this particular file, like I said, I started my focus point close, one of these rocks here, worked it back into the mid-ground of the boulder field, up into the cliffs of the waterfalls, and then off into the trees. So I ended up manually stacking these with five images. To get the best results out of this focus stacking software, you do want to stack in order. So start with what's closest to you and work it through the frame. Don't jump around. And I've always shown you working it through the scene, and that's important just to help make the software have the best chance of its algorithms being successful with this. And this is where I really sort of like the workflow to Helic and Focus. And a lot of my videos you've seen, what I typically do is I would go to this first image, I would do my Lightroom edits on it, get it looked cleaned up, get it pretty close to where I want it to be, and then I'd apply those settings to the rest of the images in the stack. Then I would bring it into Photoshop to do the focus blend, and I would bring it back to Lightroom, and that then I'd have my stacked file in there. And I usually wouldn't have to make a whole lot more tweaks, maybe something else in Photoshop or something like that. But because Helicon Focus can do raw to DNG, I can blend my raw files and I can export them into Helicon Focus, blend them in there, and then bring them back into Lightroom as a DNG, which is really cool um, because then I can do my post-processing on that final blended file. So that's what we're going to do here today. We're going to start with these five images. We're going to highlight them, right click on them, and I'm going to export them to Helicon Focus. So right click, Helicon Focus, DNG. It is going to export those. So it has opened my five images as a stack in Helicon Focus. Let's just go over the interface real quick. I am just gonna hit some of the high points, some of the happy paths through the software. There are a lot of options that you can tweak, change, and configure. And really, their help file is really good and goes a very linear way through it. So I'm gonna to link to their help inside my video description. So if you're using the software and you really wanna dig in on something, their help file is really well worth taking a look at. It's very useful and can it really, they do a better job of explaining some of the stuff than I would be able to do, but I do just want to show you some of the highlights of the software and sort of through my happy path and show off some of those. So this is the file. I've got my five images in here. It is not blended yet. Now, one of the things Helicon Focus does is, in, as, I've, as we've done in Photoshop, we always have to bring the images in, align them, and then do the focus blending. Well, Helicon Focus will do the alignment for you. So you don't have to do that step like you do in Photoshop. It's in here. Now, there are some ways to tweak that, and that is underneath your preferences. So on a Mac, it's underneath Helicon Focus, preferences. And here on the auto adjustments button, it just sort of gives you how much variance it can take when it's trying to align those images and what it can do with it. It works out pretty well. I have not changed any of these, any of these settings, but I just wanted to point out that it is there for that alignment if you feel like you need to change it, tweak it, or anything like that. You got your main image here, you've got your stacked images here, and we are in what's called the rendering tab. That's where it opens into, this is what we have, and there are three rendering options that you can choose from Helicon Focus. So, the help file talks about what method A is, what method B is, and what method C is. And it's really depending whether it's using contrast 
or pixels or a combination of different things to form those focused images. Highly recommend jumping into the file, the help file, if you, you try the software to read about each one of those. But with that said, even in the help file, it says experiment and try different ones. So it's really sort of a subjective, how do you feel? And it can vary from image to image. So I would be careful of saying, always use method A, always use method B. And they make it so easy to try each one that it really doesn't hurt to go through and do that. So let's take method A. We choose that. There's two settings I can change with both method A and method B, and that is the radius and the smoothness. With the radius, if I want a little bit sharper edges and things like that, I can bump the radius down a little bit. And same with smoothing, lessen that, and I will get a slightly more crisp and sharp blend on that. Now that's at the risk of some halos and some, some fringing. So you wanna be careful with that as to where you change it. For the sake of this demo, I'm just gonna leave it at its default. If I do play with these, that sometimes bump that radius down like one and smoothing about the same, but it makes it super easy to preview. So let's just take a look. We'll choose A, I'm gonna take the defaults for radius and smoothing, and I'm just gonna click this render button down here, and it pops up in the right pane this is the blended image. So what's cool is I move my mouse through the scene, it tells me what image it's actually using, what it thought was the most in focus. So if I come up here and look, here's 503, 503, 504, 505. So right in that little small area, it used these multiple images. If I wanna zoom in, I can just press the mouse button, right left mouse button, and it zooms in and takes a look. We can take a peek at these and see what we think. And so you can just sort of work your way through the image like that. If you wanna try a different method of rendering, you can come into method B and you can render that. Sort of builds it up over on the right hand side. Again, you can scroll through, take a look and see what image it's using all through the image. Again, left click, you can see like that. That's pretty cool. And just to try the third one, we hit method C, which is pyramid. And the only option I have here is smoothing which you can change if you want, but we're gonna click render there, build it up, and we scroll through here. And again, I can arrow over the image and it will tell me what it used. Click on that, bring it forward, looks good, and that's it. So in this particular image, as I sort of move through there, I sort of like method B the best. So we're gonna go with method B, that's gonna be the one we choose. I did not change radius, I did not change smoothing, that's it. So now we've got our image rendered. So here's what's cool with the retouching. Instead of having to play with masks and Photoshop and try to figure it all out, what you can do here is you can come in here and I can choose an image from my stack, which is gonna make this the image on the left side of the screen. And on the right side of the screen, I can use the brush and I can brush in that from the other side. So for example, say we take a look at here, right here in this mid-ground, this is saying it's used like 501. Well, say I think 503 is a little sharper. What I can do is I highlight 503 over here. That is now going to paint in 503 into this image and help clean that up. So if I think something needs cleaned up, I can go choose my original source file that I think is sharper, select that, it'll preview that on the left side of the screen and then I can brush it in on the right side of the screen. So if you're really looking at that detail or you think it, the algorithm just messed it up a little bit, there's, it's very easy to make those corrections in this screen and work your way through the image and choose what you think is best if you think the algorithm did something a little off. So I think that tool is really awesome, really amazing. And really, it does have some other tools. It's got a clone tool at the top. You can clone parts. I'm, I wouldn't do that in here. I've got Lightroom and Photoshop that I would handle that type of editing. I, like I said, I started this series with just the raw image and I'm gonna keep it the raw image because I can do my real post-processing work in Lightroom and Photoshop. So I wouldn't do cloning, but the tool is there. From there, text to scale. This is really more for scientific research. You can put in text for scale and things like that. Not really relevant, in my opinion, for landscape photography. Then when we get to the saving dialog, it has all sorts of save options. We can save the project file. I can share it to Facebook, publish to web, copy results, save the depth map. Really the only one I'm gonna use is save. I don't use any of those other ones. What I've done now is I have blended my image, found the mode I thought I was most happy with. I'm gonna save this. It's saving as a DNG file. I'm going to choose save. Pop-up message just tells me to exit Helicon Focus when I'm done. So we're gonna click okay there. I'm gonna close Helicon Focus and there is my image in Lightroom. So essentially I closed Helicon Focus, said exit, yes to exit, saves it into Lightroom as a DNG file. I can see it there. I'm gonna give this three stars just so I don't miss it. 
Okay, so this is my exported file as the DNG, and I can go to town with it from here. It's blended, I've got a nice focus stack to it, and I can go through here and do my edits. Today, I'm not gonna run through those edits in the interest of time. I've done edits in most of my other videos. I do have a video on my basic Lightroom editing workflow, which you're welcome to check out, and I will link in the description as well. And that'll go through pretty much what I do with most of my files to get them to about that 80, 85% mark of looking pretty good and in finer points from there. But we're gonna skip the edit in here. I will just show the edited focus stacked images in this at the end of this video though, so you can see what it all looked like at the end. Like I said, we sort of took the happy path through there. There are several options in there. The help file that comes with it is very good. It's a single page, well laid out. So those finer point details are in there. Essentially, at the end of the day, I do like this software. It made focus stacking very easy. I see myself continuing to use it in the future, most likely instead of Photoshop, partially just because of how easy it is. And I also really do like the fact I can bring my photos into Lightroom, find my focus stacked images that I wanna to blend together, immediately and not have to do my edits, but take them into Helicon Focus, choose my blend mode, see which one works best, choose that one, fix anything I need to, might need to with its specialized retouching tool, which is pretty cool, and then save it back into Lightroom as a DNG file to do my edits. And I, but I've been real happy with the performance and real happy with the quality and ease of use. So if you're looking for another tool to focus stack your images, or you're just not really happy with how Photoshop's doing it, and whether the quality of result or the time it takes, Helicon Focus is well worth taking a look at. Super easy to use. I think it's a great tool. Like I said, I'll continue to use it over time. Maybe we'll circle back around in a future video and do another comparison, more specific comparison between Photoshop focus stacking and Helicon Soft uh, focus stacking and see which one really does better. Uh, but that was an interesting tool. I just want to sort of share it with uh, my viewers just to get it out there and let people see what it's all about. So if you enjoyed today's video, be sure to hit that like button. And if you want to see future landscape photography content from me, including behind the scenes, gear reviews, tips and tricks, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any landscape photography content from me in the future. And thank you for watching.